Well, hello. Hi. Who you are and how you got it and what exactly is happening today. Okay, this is uh, 75 years to the day, uh, the anniversary of the first woman's dipsy hike. It was April 21st, 1918, and we're celebrating it with a little commemorative run over the course today for women only. Uh, the dipsy hikes, women's dipsy hikes, were pioneering events in the history of women's sports. They were the first women's cross country races in the United States and the largest all women's races until the 70s. Women, as you know, weren't allowed to run in the, any organized distance races in this country until uh, around 1971. We have two survivors here, which thrills me to no end, and it looks like a glorious day, and uh, really glad that we're able to put this together. And How many people do you anticipate running today? Um, they didn't have to sign up, so I'm not sure. I think we'll get between 50 and 100. 50 and 100, not 15 and 100. Uh, I think uh, closer to 75, maybe. Will there be people on, on the uh, race? Is there water stops? Or? Well, it's not a race. I want to emphasize that. It is, uh, we'll start a watch here, and we'll call out your time if you want it. But we're not recording finishers. There's no fee. Uh, we do have ribbons, though, commemorative ri ribbons. But it's not a race. This is just to celebrate. 75 years of women women uh, in sports. And, uh, Good. Okay. The race, or you did the, the Dipsy hike. My name is Laura Strata, and I ran the race as Laura Vazani in 1921. Um, and um, we had a, a gang from San Francisco that used to meet under the ferry building every Sunday, real early. And uh, we had an accordion on the ferry boats and we went all the way to Mill Valley in the ferry boats and dancing and singing. And then we'd run the race to Stinson Beach, all the way to Stinson Beach. And when we got over there, we'd either go swimming and had dancing over there and a nice lunch. And then we'd hike all the way back. How Same many, thing. How many years did you do it? Well, we did that for a number. We did that for about, I would say, about eight years altogether. Would Almost you, every Sunday. Would you train throughout the year? Or would you only? No, we just, went for fun. We we just went for the fun of it. You never. My played. sister, who is 90 now, she came in 13th on that day and got the last trophy of the day. I only got a two-pound can of coffee, and some other friends of ours got uh, old things like uh, money orders for gloves and all that type of thing. But we really had a good time. What's the most recent year that you hiked over the Dipsy Trail? Oh my, I'm <laughs> 88 now. I would I haven't been doing hiking for a long time now. No. Did you, no. Have you noticed or did you notice changes over the trail over the years or is it still the same trail? Well, I haven't been on the trail for quite a while. I've been over there in the car. My brother took us all around, uh, around Mount Tamalpais and all around in a car. But so I wouldn't know about the trail now. I haven't been on it for so long. How about the changes in Mill Valley? Have those uh, been drastic? Oh, I don't come over to Mill Valley much, but we had those long steps to climb up. I guess they're still there. Still there. Long steps. And um, huffing and puffing, but we made it all the time. Every Sunday, the same old rigmarole, but we had fun. It was just a joyful occasion all the time. Do you remember which part of the, the hike or what part of the trail was the most difficult for you? No, well, I, we rested a lot, you know, and I was, I was better going downhill and just look at his split going downhill, but uh, the stairs, when you got to the top of the stairs, you, you were tired, and so then... Did uh, you run most of the, of the race then yourself? Well, we, that day, I did race, yes. You but, ran, you didn't walk... Oh, no, no, we ran. ran, we ran, we were trying to make something, uh, you know, get a good, uh, good timing there, but... Um, Do you remember what your time was? No, but I came in way after my sister. I forget. She, she was the good one. Uh, I'm told my name is before hers, but it shouldn't be because she, she got the cup. She got the last cup. She remembers everything. She's 90 now, and she remembers everything about it. I don't remember too much. We had a, a, a crowd of people that we used to go with every Sunday, men and uh, women, and uh, it was fun. That's all I can remember. It was. I look back at those. Uh, hikes and uh, the dancing and the swimming and everything and it's a joyful thing to remember. All right. You know. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to have. Why is that? Uh, He's going to talk to you and ask you some questions. Well. <laughs> <laughs>
Can you ask her for me, Carol? I'll just ask you real quick. I, I don't like to tell on, people. So kind of loud. <laughs> just ask, ask her if she can tell me what her name was, and she can recall the first day that she ran the race, if she can describe it to me. In a hurry. Would you uh, tell him what your name is and what you remember about the, the day of the race? First, introduce yourself. Oh, I'm a Reed Crowder. And I remember that I, I, I finished it. That was, I was very proud that I finished the race. But I hate to tell you, I, I came in about the end of the lot of time. <laughs> and, and that was, uh, I don't remember what year that was. Did she, did she train for the race year round? Or was it oh, I always was. I always liked to, to uh, hike over here when I was a teenager. I didn't live in San Diego. So you were in good shape. Already uh -huh. in physical shape. I always enjoyed hiking. And I hiked up Mount Tamalpais. Uh -huh. It was called a hike back then. Did you run most of it or did you hike most of it? Did you walk most of the race? Listen, I should run. I didn't run, I'll tell you right now. I, I came in at the end. But I did finish. <laughs> That's how I got that medal. <clears throat> Can you ask her, if, did she run it one year or, or, or a number of years? Was it just that one year you ran? Why didn't you run well, it again? I, I, oh, I walked over. I mean, I always hiked you the weekends. Always I came over here and hiked. But <coughs> that was the only time that I... But one race was enough. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah, what your name is and have you tried to run the Dipsy race before? Uh, Michelle Waltz, and uh, that's my first time running the Dipsy. Oh, how is it you happen to choose today to run? Because um, it's the 75th annual and my girlfriend suggested running it for fun. Do you train year round or is this the... Yeah, mountain biking and running. Okay. Um, have you heard about the Dipsy or did, did they tell you about this for the first time today? No, I've heard about it. I've just never run it. Okay. Oh. Go ahead and tell me the, what your name is. Carolyn Hollingsworth. And have you run the race before, Carolyn? I've run it four times. I haven't run it in about four years. Yeah. What was your first year and what's been your best time? Um, the, the last four years of the 80s, I ran the Dipsy. Yeah. What was your best time in the 80s? I think it was about, I'm not really sure, I think it was an hour and six minutes, but I'm not positive. Yeah. What is the brought you back today after all those years of not running? Um, just the big celebration of the 75th anniversary of the first time women have run this and I thought that'd be pretty exciting and a lot of fun to get out of here with a group of friends. What have you noticed is different or special about the Dipsy as opposed to other races you may have run? Well it's the oldest for one thing and uh, just it's so hard the hills just kill you and all the stairs and it's a real challenge getting over the mountains. Yeah. All right, thanks. <laughs> Go ahead and let us know what your name is. My name's Lori Shanoff. And have you run the race before? Yeah, about, I think this will be my fourth year. What's been your best time so far? 105. Somewhere around 105. Not bad. So you, did you train year round when you were running uh, for those years? No, nope, I um, about two months before would start training. And that's and how much would you train on a busy week when you were getting ready? Um, a busy week might do about 50 or 60 miles a week with a lot of hills in there. And uh, what do you think is separates the dip here? What makes it special uh, as opposed to other races? The challenge. It's quite um, challenging just with all the hills. And also the downhill is even challenging. You can't really rest on the downhill because you're maneuvering around. And it's beautiful um, scenery, too. Thank you. That's Christina Bandina. <laughs> okay, one more time. I wasn't rolling. Time. <laughs> My name is Christina Bandina. No, actually, I'm Christina Trofer, and I live in Sausalito. Okay. And this is my first Dipsy, actually, so it's a great one to start off with, I think, because it celebrates women, and I think this is Year of the Woman, right? Yeah. Or Decade of the Woman, or... Are you a runner, or are you just yeah. for the fun of it? Um, well, right now I'm a fun runner. I grew up as a runner and did a little too much running, and so now I just really enjoy it and have a good time. So I thought this is a great one to start off with. Have you ever walked the Dipsy Trail? you know what it's about? No, but I've heard it from my friends that you have just interviewed, and I've heard many stories about it and read a lot of articles, so gonna, I'm ready to try it out. Are they going to pace you, or are they going to go at their own pace and just leave you behind? You betcha. 
Yeah, I hope they don't leave me behind, but I'll be right there with them. Thanks. Okay. Last couple of questions. Just tell me what your name is. Florencia Gascon Amix. And what was the first year you ran the race? Uh, I ran the first time two years ago. Uh, How did you hear about the race? Uh, Actually, my father-in-law, uh, he's Jim Nason, uh, he told us about that. He's a, a good runner, and he wanted me to start uh, running. I'm a, just, I run for fun. I'm not a serious runner. But I, I run it the first time, and uh, I love it. So, okay, and you've run other races, I know. What has been special about the Dipsy as opposed to the Beta Breaker or something else? It's a survival race. It's a big challenge. It's a, it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's a great view. The ocean, the mountains. It's a, any other races like that is... Has you have something time to enjoy that while you're running in, in pain? Actually, after dynamite, no, it's after cardiac, I start to enjoy the race after I finish, but uh, yes, I do. Okay. I see that. Thank you very much. Hey, hold on. What? First of all, what's your name? Uh, Etta Stickle. And how many Dipsy's Dip? Have you run the Dipsy before? Oh, yes. I've run about seven or eight. How did you first hear about this? Oh, um, I've lived in the Marin County for a long time. So uh, I used to live in Mill Valley, and I used to come down here and watch them take off. And about eight years ago, I decided I'm going to take off, too. So. Well, that's how I got to run it. What's been your best time so far? Well, um, three years ago I was number 36, and it was. Um, oh, you just missed by one. Missed by three steps, actually. Some big guy passed me three steps before the finish line. And you probably run other races. What is it that separates the Dipsy from other races that makes it special for you? Oh, it's the spirit of the Dipsy uh, more than anything. I um, I run a lot of t uh, trail races all over California, and some are tougher. But uh, it's the spirit of the Dipsy. There's something unique about it. Okay, thank you. Like, uh, what's your name? My name is April Powers. <laughs> Have you ever run the Dipsy before? No, I haven't. Only, well, in, for fun. I've never run the race. You know the trail. I know the trail, and I've been um, in the cheering section for the last five years during the race. How did you first hear about this race? The, when I first came to Marin as a runner, um, that's all I heard about when I joined the Tamalpa Running Club. Everyone says, are you going to do the Dipsy? Are you going to do the and I've heard about it for years. And what's That's taking you so long to run it? Um, because I'm a tra I was a track runner and I was really afraid of getting hurt, actually. And I like to run short and fast, not long and hilly. Okay. Thanks. Sure. Well, Anybody give in? And have you run the Dipsy before? I've only run the trail once about five years ago. I, haven't, I entered for this year, but I don't know if I got in yet. Oh, and how was it that you heard about the Dipsy? What did you first hear about it? Um, well, I always read about it in the paper and the sports section and how grueling it is and uh, all the injuries that people get and uh, just the different war stories. I guess from people that run it. What's taking you so long to sign up then? Uh, the war stories, but then I figured that this is a great way to break into it because of all the, the females and it seems like it's a pretty social kind of just, just go and run it and have fun today and no pressure and just see how I do and then uh, go from there. Did you say you, you've walked the trail so you know? No, I've run it once before, but that was like five years ago. I don't even remember anything remember too much. Being, I remember the stairs. Do you remember it being more difficult than any other press? Yeah, definitely, and I've run a lot of races and stuff, but uh, nothing like this. Well, how about beauty? What sort of beauty sets this aside from other that, that you're up in the hill away from traffic and uh, the views, and like, just like I said, just being able to run with people in, in that kind of scenery is a lot of different than the 10Ks or any kind of road races you have. It's just you and the hill and see what you can do with it. When you're training, how many miles a week do you usually run? Um, when I'm training, I usually run like 35 or so. And um, I, I just run uh, 10Ks on the weekends every once in a while, one a month, maybe two sometimes. Okay. Right. Thanks a lot. Thanks. What's your name is? It's Mava Garvey. And have you run the district before me? Mm -hmm. About seven times. I live in Mill Valley. What was the first year you ran it? Ooh. Um, um, about 83, I think. Well, what's been your best time so far? 73 minutes. Hey, not bad. <laughs> when you ran 73 minutes, how many uh, miles were you running a week? Oh, 
about 25, 30. Do you still run quite a bit? Not as often as I used to. I've been injured a lot. So I ride my bike and I swim, but I still run. What is it, uh, knowing the Dipsy Trail as, as well as you do, what is it that separates that from other trails or other races? It's so hard. I think so. I hope not. <laughs> do you have time as you're running that to enjoy the beauty, or is it just... You always work, enjoy work. it, but it's work, work, work. Okay, thanks. Thanks. 1918. It was the first women's cross-country race in the United States. It was the largest all-women's race in the United States until the 1970s. You know, women were not even allowed allowed in any distance races until 1971. We have two surfers. Well, I'll introduce them after. I want to say some things about the course. At the top of the steps, at the top of the steps, try to stick on the trail, that little trail there, because the commuters are pretty wild at this time. And that also applies for crossing panoramic, which is going to be extremely hairy. Please be careful there. We have ribbons, commemorative ribbons for every finisher, and I think you'll really enjoy that. That'll be at the finish line. Will you be there for two hours or more? <laughs> yes. Two hours is it, though. No rise guaranteed beyond 7.30. If you don't know the course, We're gonna find someone who does. If you're really uncomfortable or unsure about it, it may not be a good idea to go out. Uh, it's a long, arduous trail, and it is getting toward night. So go out a part of the way if you're really uncomfortable. Sweats. We have a sweats van. Anyone who wants to leave sweats, Greg Nako here, and he has that big red van, uh, pick up there, what's it called? Utility vehicle. That's what you look for at the finish line. There's no, we're hoping there's water on the course at Cardiac, there may not be. So drink in Old Mill Park, uh, we have water at the finish. No shortcuts, guys. Can I please have your attention, please, just for a moment, please, just for a moment, please do not take suicide or the swoop shortcuts. We do not have a permit. It will only alienate things. It will only add a, a couple of seconds to your run. There will be a ranger at the top of the swoop. Please don't take the off-limit shortcuts, please. We also want you to sign in when you reach the finish line. We have some special people here today and to start off, I'd like to introduce one of the women winners, and uh, that's what this is all about, that these earlier women have paved the way for the women nowadays. The 1989 Dipsy champion, Eve Pell. running boom of the 70s and it's so great to have her here, Dr. Joan Ulyat. Well, I stand here 
as a survivor of the Dipsy runs in 73, 74, 75, 76, something like that. <laughs> I stopped the year they started giving shirts to the top 25. And uh, I didn't know this, but I came in 26th. Uh, that kind of bothered me. It was Paul Reese that passed me just to the finish, and if, I, if I'd known there were shirts, I would have gone and gotten So I didn't run it again until 1988, and that year they were giving shirts as usual the top 35, and that year I came in 36th. <laughs> I said, forget it, I'm not meant to do this. But it's a wonderful course, as everyone knows. It has a tremendous history, and it's really great to see so many people out here. I wish I could match. Eve's poetry, but I can't, but welcome everyone. <laughs> Days, right over here. Oh. <laughs> this is this lady was several years the only woman in the Dipsy race for several years, and the only woman in the uh, Beta Breakers for several years, and she is credited as a winner of the Dipsy before women were officially allowed in. Elaine Pedersen. about in the early days was sneaking in, which was a, really a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> and I remember Frank Geis and, um, I can't remember the name of the other man, uh, Bob something, they, they, they were with the uh, AAU, and they're very supportive, actually. They couldn't really officially sanction us, but they always welcomed us. So we just sort of hid in the crowd, jumped on the trail, and we were off for Stinson Beach. And also, there were certain people like, um, like Walter Stack that were so wonderful about encouraging women that anybody that ran it felt like they had to do it the next year because of all the support they got. It's a wonderful race. I feel like part of my soul is just tied to that Dempsey Trail, just as I'm sure that Barry does too. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine. We have the 1987 Dipsy champion, Christy Patterson. holder today running with us, Peggy Smythe. guests. Um, first we have, you might have noticed, three trophies. And they are here from the original Dipsy Women's Hikes. The grand, Judy Leidig's grandmother, Lauren, Sch La Laura Blanche Scaflauer. Blanche Flower. Blanche Flower. Uh, Judy Leidig's grandmother has brought, uh, we have those trophies. But now we have two survivors of the Women's Dipsy Hike. They were only held from 1918 through 1922 when people said it's, un it's unsafe for women, it's immoral for women to do this. <laughs> On the far right of these two, she lives in Mill Valley. She has a, a commemorative ribbon that she can't locate it. She's 93, oh, Marie really? Crowder. said she wouldn't have to speak. <laughs> and right next to her, a woman who won a award in 1921, and her husband and son have won five father-son trophies in the Dipsy, so there's a lot of Dipsy history here. Laura Strata from San Francisco. Well, 
again, thanks for coming. I know you want to get started. They want a picture. All right, all. All right, well, let's head over to the clock for a group picture and then we'll start you all. Erica, Erica, we need to be together. I need to get my shorts off. Back them in there. Good, good, good. Tell Kenny to get back. Kenny, you want to get up here too? No, it's okay. I will, I will when you're done, no problem. A big difference. It is. It's really, it's, it's really quiet. I gotta be going again now. Cause it'll cramp up. Ready to go, Christy? All right. Good job. All right, Christy. All right. All right. They're all here. There you go, Jocelyn. Who was the first one up? Good work. Good work. Uh, Kelly, Kelly lost. Kelly was by, and then Mary too. Kelly's looking like a top. Wow. Also, Mary. Wow, what a hurt. They're all together. Ready to go, Anne? Good work. All right. All right. All right. All right. We knew your name, we'd yell it at Go you. Go, Megan! Yeah. All right. Good job, Terry. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Janine. Come on, April. Janine. Yeah. All right, Megan. All right, April. Hey, Rosanna. All right, sir. All right. Let's go, baby. Good work, 
Same old finish. Yeah, I know. Oh, I, I said somebody said, I don't want to jog it. I said, yeah. 
Where'd you go? Stupid. Yeah, you did all right. You did all right, Valencia. Oh, me perdí. I lost. One minute, say, wait a minute, this is not it. I'm gonna back to the road and see what I, what I do. And then. So just a few minutes ago, it wasn't. It was. It was just right here, close to the road. Ah, uh, he was in the trail before the road. And then I went all the way, and I noticed that almost parallel to the road, it was a trail and some stairs. And then I took it. I almost cry. <laughs> Is it broken? No. Oh, feels like it. No, it's but not. You came across finishing. What exactly happened? I'm a little. I think we just twisted an twisted, ankle and maybe yeah. a tendon sprain. What part of the race did you do it in? On the downhill, the, the steps kind of got a four or five holes in there. You didn't see run. the steps. Like yeah, really. The hike. The hike. Did it on the hike. <laughs> Were you taking them two at a time or one at a time? One at a time. One at a time, and, time and someone planted one there that I didn't see. You got see. back into it. Good. Did you get it? How many dipsies have you run before today? I've won, I've uh, ran one practice dipsy, and uh, and that was last week. Oh, last so, Thursday. Th last Thursday. This is the second time I've ever run the trail. And how did you learn about the dipsy? Um, I joined up with Samalpa, and then uh, and that's kind of the thing to do when you're with Samalpa, uh -huh. and just the people I've been running with have been talking about it, and I've just heard a lot about it. I grew up here, so. How much do you train a week to? Uh, I probably run about 30 miles a week, but I'm building my mileage right now. What is it that you notice special about the Dipsy Trail compared to other trails or other races that you've run? It's it's a lot harder than anything else I've run. It's much steeper, and uh, uh -huh. it's um, just uh, much more challenging. There's it's just very uh, mental. You have to really be mentally into it, and you have to really concentrate. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did he run it? You got lost in the race. Where, where, where did you get lost and what happened? After the last hill, you have the option to take the road. And there's a short, uh, it's like uh, the last uphill. What's it called? Uh, the, uh, insult. So, insult. And then you have the option to go to the left, which is the usual one, or to go to the road. And then uh, I took the shortcut and for some reason there was like a, two ways to go. Uh, the trail divided and I went to the left and it was to the right and I, I lost like three minutes and started yelling because I was so desperate. I had a lot of energy at the end and I just, I, I look around and I was completely lost. <laughs> so what's your name? My name is Kathy Sierra. And have you run the Dipsy before today? Never, never. Why did you come run it today? Uh, I belong to Tamalpa and they said it's a good character run, Kathy, you need it. I'm racing with um, them and a 5K at Big Star on Sunday. So you've been running quite a bit before. Whoa. No, I just joined the team um, two months ago. Yeah. I've been have running prior. I have heard about it. I've heard it was really grueling and very hard. And I was nervous all day knowing that I had 700 steps to go up. So how did your first experience work out? It was hard? beautiful. It was, it was hard, but it was beautiful. It wasn't and, any harder or easier than you thought it might be? Um, actually, it was a little easier than I thought it might be. <laughs> yeah. okay. Thanks. You know. Question, uh, what's your name? I'm Jill Nichols. And have you run this race before, Jill? No, I haven't. 
And what brought you out here today if you've never run it before? Well, I'm hoping to run the Dipsy, and I thought I should know what I'm up against. And now that I do, I don't know. No, it was a great adventure. It was a wonderful adventure. How did Actually, you make out today time-wise? I ran an hour and 22 minutes. So I was hoping to do an hour and 15, but the hills were tough, tougher than I expected. When was the first time you'd heard about the Dipsy? Last summer. Uh-huh. Are you new in the area, is that why? I'm fairly new to Marin. I lived in San Francisco about 10 years ago for a while, and I'm just back in the area, so. And I'm running more than I used to, and off-road runs are interesting, and I love the scenery up here. You can't beat it. Have you run other races before, though? Just for fun. Uh -huh. 10Ks, well, what would road races, what nothing. What separate the, the Dipsy Trail from, say, a, a 10K race? 10K road race is just a flat, all-out run, and the scenery and the trail is such a challenge here, just because of uh, how steep it is and the tree roots and the scenery. It's just all-encompassing. It's a tough trail. Thanks. What's your name? Janine. Janine what? Shangle. And have you run this race before, Janine? Uh, no. This will be my first year. Have you been running much uh, over the course of your life? No. This is the second time I've been over the course. So I got lost out there today, actually. Oh, did you? Mm -hmm. Over here got lost also. Where'd you did get you? lost? Oh. Uh, actually, gosh, I don't know. I don't know the course well enough. Um, Top of Sioux Hollow. There you go. <laughs> Top of Sioux Hollow. Close to where? Yeah. You came in with a group of people. Today. Were you running with the group? Did you all get lost or just you? Um, actually, me and one other gal uh, got lost. So I actually caught them finally on the downhill. But no, I, at the time, I wasn't with anyone. So. How did you hear about the Dipsy? When's the first, when's the first time you heard about it? Um, well, I've known about it for years because I grew up in Mill Valley. But I've only become a runner in the last year. So. Did you just, run, say, in high school? No, nope, never did. So just, just out of the blue. Yeah, run. yeah. It'll yeah. be... How'd you make out? How do you feel after running for the first time? Um, I feel okay. I feel okay. Hopefully I'll be ready on race day. Thanks. Sure. My name's Elaine, Elaine Parliman. Have you run this race before, Elaine? Yes, I have. A couple of times, about five or six times. But not for about six years. How did you hear about it the first time you ran it? Uh, I was living in Mill Valley and I just heard about it and decided to do it. Have you tried a lot the year you, you ran it? I, I did. Not the first year, but the following years I used to run it about twice a week for about three months before the race. So how many miles is that a week? Did you take Sioux Paulo? Oh, I ran about maybe 35 miles Was it right up there? And then I'd, I'd run up and down the stairs at work in the, in the city, in the building during my lunch. What is it that separates this race from other races or uh, courses you may have run? Uh, I don't know. There's just something kind of savage about it, I guess. I, I just really get uh, high when I run it. I always do a lot better than I expect to. I just find it really exciting. Thanks. What's that? Tell us what your name is. I'm Peggy Smythe, and I live in San Anselmo. And um, I have the course record, women's course record for the Dipsy. I'm sorry, I can't tell you the time. I can't remember. 57.33, and that was in 1988. And um, I've been pretty much off running for three years, and I got invited to come out tonight. And uh, are you going to run it again this year? No, I'm not entered. Um, but maybe in a few more years. You see, I'm still too young. <laughs> I'm still too young, and um, I already. Have have two number twos, three, four, five. I want number one. So this is the kind of race where you can look forward to getting older. That's right. Right? Until okay. So you have a chance to win, you're going to run it again, huh? Right. I'm just going to wait. Plus, you don't want to get injured. Tell me, um, you're, you're from, you grew up in this area? I grew up in um, the East Bay, and I've been living in Marin for 13 years. So when was the first time you heard about the Dipsy, and what were your first impressions of running it the first time? <sighs> okay. Uh, interesting about the Dipsy. I first heard about the Dipsy in the early 70s. I was kind of jogging with this guy, and he used to talk about the Dipsy. I'm thinking, what is this Dipsy? I don't know what it is. And then finally, I have to see. 
think what year. Uh, God, I finally did enter it, I think, in 1977, and I was so excited, and this is when you could still enter the Dipsy the day of. I was so excited, I entered myself with the scratch runners, men, not women. And I'm like standing around, and the guy I'm with is going, well, uh, honey, all the women have gone. Why are you still here? And I go, well, I don't know. This number says I have to wait. And I ended up running with the guys, and that was my first experience. And no then... Sure that year, I guess, huh? No, <laughs> but it made me run faster trying to stay with the guys. Uh -huh. and what, what are your memories of it? Did you think it was different? Difficult, super difficult. Oh, you know what? I couldn't, you know, I didn't realize there were shortcuts. And what I couldn't figure out is why somebody would be like behind me and suddenly ahead of me. I'm <laughs> like, what? What's going on here? And then I learned that the Dipsy had shortcuts. And when you when you trained your, your best year's top 10 finishes, what, how much would you run a week to train? My training would go from like 60 to 80 miles a week. But, um, you know, I, yeah, and I didn't train specifically for the Dipsy. I was road racing, running on the track, but I'm really, really, I'm blessed with the ability to run up hills. And, I mean, that's just something God's given me that, and my, I'm really confident. Actually, I started running up hills with my horse. I used to do ride and tie and endurance horse racing, and I would, like, run with my horse. And, um, run with it, not on top of it. No, I'd run with the horse, and then I'd come to hills. By side, you mean? Yeah, and I'd come to hills, and I'd grab his tail, and I'd let him pull me up, and eventually I weaned myself off the horse, and then we'd run up the hills together. Yeah, he was a great partner. Thanks, Peggy. <laughs> well, you're welcome. My name's Leslie McMullen. Money. So, I mean, I just don't know. I've only run three, and the first year I ran, I believe, was 84, 85. It was the 75th anniversary. And I got um, I had a strange race, and I stayed away for quite a few years. I just sort of went to the top of cardiac and gave people their places until uh, two years ago, and decided I had to come back and do it for fun. I think I got a little bit burnt out of running, and um, I had a bad experience my first Dipsy, which is terrible to say, but it happened, and uh, it took me a few years to sort of get over it, I guess. Was that a fall or something? Didn't fall. Sent um, just to, I, was, I think it was a lot of pressure on me that year. I sent my racing shoes to the finish. Lost a lot of toenails at the finish and just you know everybody can throw up a dog I probably didn't really know how to approach it over trained for it didn't taper for it Are you run it this year? oh definitely definitely so you like the dipsy I love the dipsy I've always come and watched it I've been at the party and I've, I've been a great supporter of everybody who does it I've never been down on the race just down on my performance probably well what's the what's been your this is not your best year but what's been your training schedule what do you think the dipsy how do you train what do you run uh, my running's been a little bit inconsistent for the last few years so all I can say is about six weeks before I get this burr up my butt to just go try to get over the hill. And uh, I don't know, it's just been a lot of fun. I think my favorite year was uh, a year, not last year, the year before. I was 36 and I got what I deserved. Right out of the shirts. And if you don't train hard enough, you get what you deserve. So. What for you is training hard? How many miles do you run away? If, if I were feeling good, probably about 50 miles for it. That would be good. But I'm not doing that right now. And one last question. Uh, what makes the trail special or different from other races or trails? Run. The Dipsy, it just has so many facets to it. You know, it challenges you every time you turn around. It's something different, whether you're trying to run down a big hill or you're passing somebody, you're trying to stay up. It, it's beautiful, it's challenging, and it's the greatest reward when you get to the beach and it's all over. It's just a fascinating, wonderful day. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Great. Right. What's your name? Sarah Gordon. And have you run the race before, Sarah? Nope, first time. <laughs> oh, did you manage to come out today? What brought you out here? Uh, my fiance is a big Dipsy lover, and uh, he's run it a few times, got two black shirts, and so he convinced me to start running and stop smoking, and here I am. <laughs> do you do running at all, or is it just sort of just something fun you thought you'd do for the heck of it once, and that's it? It'll be a year in five days. I run a year. Well, so you have been running quite a bit. A little bit. How much, do you, how much have you been running recently to train for this? Uh, 15 miles a week, 20 miles a week. Uh -huh. Is that yeah. hills or flat? Trails. Stairs? Both. No stairs. <laughs> they are a killer. All right, thanks. Elizabeth. <laughs> she looks fine. You don't Just look a tired. couple of simple questions. Uh, okay. Well, what, what's your name? My name is Kelly. And uh, how'd you finish today, Kelly? <laughs> um, I did okay, I guess. I really love the course, so it's a lot of fun. Didn't you know that it was a hike? Um, I know. I said, is this a hike or a run? They were here said, are you kidding me? Run as fast as you can. So I said, okay. And I, I didn't run as fast as I could because my legs are cramped. But it, it was a lot of fun. I had a good time. What was your time today? 
I think Mike said he clocked me about 105, 105, 10 or something like that. What's been your best time in the years you've run the Dipsy? Uh, last year was my first year ever and I managed to make a wrong turn, fall once, and I think I did a 59, 40 something. All of that getting lost and falling down. <laughs> yeah, Where did you take a wrong turn at? Um, I'm not really sure because I don't know the the courses, the different names of where the course goes. When you're training, be it now or, or, or during the season when you're running, how much do you train a week? How much do you run a week? Mm, well, this year I've been trying to put in a little bit more miles to kind of um, build a better base, and so I usually do anywhere from like 35 to 40, 45 miles if I can. It varies. Sometimes I only get 25 in. <laughs> tell, tell me, uh, or give me kind of a comparison. Or, or analogy of the Dipsy compared to other race courses or, or uh, trails you've run. What makes the Dipsy trail special or different? Well, I think the Dipsy is a, a perfect classic. Um, I think it's really difficult for the first, you know, 40 minutes when you're climbing and constantly um, trying to work uphill. And then I really enjoy the last part of it, the last 20 minutes, which is real nice. It's downhill. And comparable to other courses, um, I don't know. I think it's probably the most difficult course I've ever run outside of Big Rock, which was last weekend, which climbed for about an hour. <laughs> you ran a tough one last week. Yeah, yeah, just for a practice huh? on Sunday. Where did your legs cramp up on you today? Uh, about one third of the way through. We did a track workout last night. Where were you guys? I was in playoffs volleyball. All right, excellent. How'd you do? Second place. All right, cool. Um, and so I, I ran, you know, track last night, and I just found my calves were really tightening up, and each stride just was really tough. But but it was okay. Thanks. Christy Patterson. And how many dipsies have you run, Christy, before the walk, the hike today? I think it's been, you mean the actual race? Yeah. Yeah. Between eight and nine. What, what year did you win? 86 or 87? 87. And how many years had you run before you won it? Uh -huh. Three or four times. And what was the first year you ran it? I believe it was 82. And so after having finished 1982, did you ever imagine that you would have a chance to win it, or did you? Think no. In the fact, the year, the, in fact, in 87, what I was thinking about was being first woman, and I was trying to beat the woman who was in front of me, whom I had been told was the first woman. But it never occurred to me that she was also the first runner. And when I passed her, and she never made a move to come with me at the last shortcut, I came down here and I realized there was nobody else because the tape was still up. So you had no idea. That was the first time it hit me. That and the fact that at the very corner where you turn off Highway 1, my daughter, who was, I think, about 10 then, 10 or 11, was absolutely going crazy. Oh, my God. Yeah, just absolutely going crazy. And she'd been at enough of my races before that I thought, I wonder what's the matter with Kim. <laughs> I thought, I better just keep going here. And then I came around the corner and I saw the tape and I went, oh, my God. <laughs> when you trained during the, the season, how much do you usually run a week to get in your best shape? In the good old days, um, <clears throat> that would have been about three or four years ago, I would run between 35 and 50 miles a week. Mostly hills, I would imagine. As much trail as I could, and occasionally on a track, but I had no track background, so that did not come real naturally. And it was the technique of timing yourself and all that kind of thing. I didn't have a knowledge base of that. So you live in Marin, right? So I do. Quite a bit. Yes. <laughs> and having run Mount Tam and also other trails around the Bay Area, what is it that makes the, the Dipsy Trail or Dipsy uh, race kind of special and unique? There's two things. One, the trail itself is probably half a dozen little microclimates. And that is just so intriguing as you work your way across, across the trail. And the, the course, the race itself has such history. And it's kind of a local legend. Plus, it's, you know, it's gone on since, I think, 1913, second oldest foot race in the country. So, and then for me, it was the whole reason I started running was I was raised in Marin, taking my daughter to the beach when I was about 33 years old. And we couldn't get here because of the traffic. 
And then I found out it was the Gypsy Race. I thought, I've always heard about this. And then I kept running into people who I knew in real life, and here they were out running around half naked on a Sunday morning. And it, I was just moved to tears, and I thought, well, I grew up here, and I don't even know the course. And I started running. Thank you, Christy. Yeah.